Welcome to another video. I want to take the limit of this multivariable function that is a function of both x and y. And the limit is such that x and y, so the, the point that we are, we're not approaching, x is not approaching zero while y is wandering, no. x and y approaching zero. So we're approaching the origin and we want to know what happens to this function. So in multivariable calculus, we cannot do L'Hopital's rule when we have indeterminate form because obviously you're going to get indeterminate form when you plug in 0, 0, 0 everywhere. You're going to have 0 over 0. So we have to resort to either factoring, algebraic manipulation, or we might have to switch to polar coordinates. And in this case, it appears that the, the best way to go about this is just to go straight to polar coordinates, which is often the most effective method of taking this kind of limit. Let's get into the video. So because I'm going to get 0 over 0, if I plug in 0, 0 for x and y, the better thing, and also factoring does not help because there's nothing I can factor out from the denominator, there's nothing common, so polar coordinates will be the better way. And with polar coordinates, what's going on is that you are approaching that point from every direction. That's the advantage. So you don't need to try different methods because it's possible for you to say, what if I try when x equals y? If you try it, it fails. So instead of trying different ways, just go straight to polar coordinates. And what, what does that mean? So converting um, into polar coordinates, coordinates, We know that x is r cosine theta, and we know that y is r sine theta. This is something that you learned in pre-calculus or in trig, okay? Um, if you want to switch from polar coordinates to, from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates, this is just what we need, okay? I've done some videos in the past, so I don't want to explain that. I just want to explain the justification for why we can find the limits easily using polar coordinates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compute, oh, this is y cubed. Oh, see what's gonna happen. It means here, notice that as x goes to zero, which is what we, what's going on here, x is going to zero, y is going to zero. As x goes to zero, guess what's happening? R cosine theta is approaching zero. R cosine theta is approaching zero, okay? But because we're going in every direction, we know it is not cosine theta that is going to zero. Because if cosine theta is going to zero, then it means we're, we're restricting the direction. Remember, theta is a question of direction, okay? So if cosine theta is going to zero, you're restricting the direction, which is defeating the whole purpose of the polar, polar coordinates. So what goes to zero is actually the radius. You're getting closer and closer to the origin from every direction. So theta can be anything. Okay, so, so you're going in every direction except that. Okay, so what we have is as r cosine theta approaches zero, this simply means r is going to zero, not cosine theta going to zero. Because if cosine theta is going to zero, you're saying that it is approaching it from the angle 90 degrees or pi over two. But the 90 degree is the y-axis. If we're approaching from the y-axis, we could as well just make our claim from here and we'll get our answer. Okay, I'll show you in the end. Okay, why it is not cosine that's going to zero. And similarly, and similarly, me similarly, as y goes to zero, r sine theta goes to zero, which implies r is what's going to zero, sine is not going to zero, okay? That is the biggest thing you need to hold on to here, okay? So it's radius that's going to zero. So we can go back to this limit and rewrite it in 
polar coordinates. So we can say that what we have here is basically the limit as r goes to zero. We're going to write x, y cubed as, where is x? r cosine theta times this cubed. So it's going to be r cosine theta times r cubed sine cubed theta divided by x squared is going to be r squared cosine squared theta plus r to the fourth sine to the fourth theta. This is what we're going to have and we can easily take this limit because now we can combine these two r's so we have let me write it here, the limit as r approaches zero. Now we have r times r is, oh, this is gonna be r to the fourth. Okay, okay, <laughs> we can have r to the fourth, and then we have cosine theta, sine cubed theta, cosine theta, is it cosine, just cosine? Yeah sine cubed theta over, in the denominator, um, we can only factor out r squared. So I can have r squared, and what's inside is gonna be cosine squared theta plus r squared sine to the fourth theta. Okay, cosine squared theta plus r squared sine to the fourth theta, okay. Well, we can simplify, right? So if we simplify, we're gonna end up with the limit as r approaches zero. This will take this out. We have r squared cosine theta sine cubed theta over. So now we have just cosine squared theta plus r squared sine to the fourth theta. Now we can. Let's try and see if we can plug in. Remember, L'Hopital's rule doesn't work here. If we plug in r equals zero, we're gonna end up with zero times anything, which is gonna be zero, over cosine squared theta plus, because of the zero here, we're gonna get zero. So we're gonna end up with zero over cosine squared theta plus zero, which is the same thing as zero over cosine squared theta, and zero over anything is equal to zero, as long as cosine squared theta is not zero. Okay? Now you say, okay, how do you know cosine squared theta is not zero? Well, let me just write that, that there. Cosine squared theta is not equal to zero. Let me put it here. If cosine squared theta equals zero, then <laughs> cosine theta equals zero. Now, if cosine theta is equal to zero, we could have from the beginning just said the top is zero, this is gonna be zero, and what you have is just r to the fourth sine to the fourth theta. By the way, when cosine is equal to zero, we know that we're dealing with theta is pi over two. So it's as if you, then we're taking the limit as r approaches zero of, watch this, you're gonna have zero over zero plus this. So basically you have zero over r to the fourth sine to the fourth theta, okay? Remember that this expression in itself is zero. This is not zero and r is not zero. R is approaching zero. So if this is already zero, what you have is basically the limit as r approaches zero of zero. And this is zero. So there's never a time where you have zero over zero in this case, because if cosine, if this was already zero at any time, then we're still getting zero as our limit. Remember, you cannot plug in zero here until you've simplified this expression. So, and the limit of a constant, no matter what r is approaching, is that constant. So, this is the reasoning behind this, where your final answer is zero. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living.
Bye-bye.